good morning children sairam children uh, you all know that we have started with the chapter electro sorry surface chemistry and we are left with only one topic that is the properties of colloids in the properties we have to study about the tyndall effect the brovin movement electrophoresis coagulation types of emulsions uh, it is not there in the syllabus anymore so in today's presentation we will be discussing about the properties these properties of colloidal solution and you all are requested to kindly copy down all the notes of chemistry uh, from the slides that I have been displaying on the screen and do solve the NCRT questions in your fair notebook from the website download the pdf for the ncrt solution and copy down the uh, questions in your notebook there is nothing logical everything here is theoretical only in this chapter so you are requested to solve the questions yourself now i am starting with the properties of colloidal solution see children uh, the first property of colloidal solution is the Brovin movement what is actually Brovin movement see when the colloidal solutions are viewed through powerful ultra microscope the colloidal particles are seen to be in a state of continuous zigzag motion that means if we see the colloidal particles through an ultra microscope these particles are not stable they are always moving colliding with the other particles and are always there in a continuous zigzag motion this continuous zigzag motion is because of the unbalanced bombardment of these particles by the molecules of the dispersion medium and it is one of the very important reason for the stability of colloidal solution so what is Brovin movement it is the zigzag motion of the particles of the colloidal solution now why this zigzag motion takes place because of the unbalanced bombardment of particles of molecule particles by the molecules of the dispersion medium and uh, it is one of the very important reason for the stability of colloidal solution this one mark question comes many times in your board exam what is the reason behind the stability of colloidal solution you will say uh, this Brovin movement is one of the reason for the stability of colloidal solution if Brovin movement not would not have been there then the colloids would not have been remained in the solvent it would have settled down so <coughs> the uh, reason for stability of colloids is the Brovin movement now coming to the second property of the colloidal solution the second property is Tyndall effect Tyndall effect you have learned earlier also what happens when a beam of light is passed through the colloidal solution the path of light becomes visible the path of light becomes visible and this ph phenomena is called Tyndall effect the cause of Tyndall effect is the scattering of light you all must have seen that if suppose uh, there is a dark room which is closed from all the sides and a small hole is left in one of the corner from which the sunlight is coming inside you can see the dust particles dancing in air what is that that is also because of the Tyndall effect that is the path of light becomes visible due to the scattering of light and it is called Tyndall effect this is the second property that we have covered today now the third and the very important property of colloidal solution is electrophoresis what is electrophoresis see what happens uh, the phenomena of movement of colloidal particles under applied electric field is called electrophoresis now before studying electrophoresis you should be knowing about the charge of colloidal particles see actually 
the colloidal particles which are present in a particular system all are having same charge like for example if suppose we are having al2o3 dot xh2o colloid all the particles will be positively charged only no any negative charge will be there similarly the metal hydroxides like your iron oxide aluminium oxide chromium oxide calcium hydroxide uh, sorry uh, these hydroxides they are also positively charged these are positively charged soul these are negatively charged soul the basic dye stuffs like methylene blue and persin blue all are these both are also positive and the most important thing the hemoglobin of our blood is having only one charge that is positive it is colloidal in nature and is having only positive charge Ex and other example of oxide is titanium oxide it is also positively charged so the colloidal solution of any of these any of these will be positively charged so all the colloidal particles of a particular system are having the same charge similarly if suppose we are talking about the metal particles the colloidal solution of copper silver gold platinum or metal sulfides like as2s3 or cadmium sulfide or sb2s3 etc any metal sulfide or suppose we are talking about a starch gum gelatin clay charcoal all these are negatively charged colloidal particles so you get to know this that all the colloidal particles of a particular system are having the same charge now coming back to electrophoresis now see what happens when a colloidal particle is placed under this u tube this is u shaped tube and inside this u shaped tube is the colloidal solution the colloidal solution along with the dispersion medium is present inside here and it is connected to the battery the negative terminal is here and the positive terminal is here now what happen when the electricity is supplied if suppose the colloidal particles present here are negatively charged then all will move towards the positively charged electrode again i'm explaining if suppose there is a colloidal solution placed under this u tube and the colloidal solution is having a charge negative as i told you all the particles of a particular colloidal solution are having the same charge suppose it is negatively charged colloidal particles then it will start moving towards the positively charged plate and will get accumulated around the plate here like for example as2s3 that is arsenic sulfide particles they get accumulated on the positively charged electrode why they get accumulated on the positively charged electrode see none of the particle comes towards this negatively charged electrode why is it so because all particles were having a negative charge so they move towards the opposite pole this is this process is called electrophoresis now electrophoresis is a very important method by which you can number 1 determine the charge on the colloidal particle with the help of electrophoresis you can determine the charge on the colloidal particles number second with the help of electrolysis you can bring about the coagulation coagulation means precipitation of the colloidal particles now see children uh, the next important property is the coagulation of colloidal solution what is the meaning of the word coagulation it is the phenomena of precipitation of colloidal solution by addition of an excess of electrolyte uh, <coughs> it is also called flocculation flocculation f l 
O double C. The spelling is wrong. It is flocculation. Now coagulation or flocculation is the same. Now there are different methods by which the coagulation of colloidal solution can be brought about. The first method is by mutual precipitation. Now just now as I told you there are positively charged colloidal particles. There are negatively charged colloidal particles. If suppose we mix the two. That is we mix the positively charged and the negatively charged. Then neutralization will occur and they will settle down at the bottom. That means the precipitation will occur. Like for example, suppose you are having calcium hydroxide sole. And to that calcium hydroxide you add arsenic sulfide. What will happen? Positive and negative will meet. They will neutralize and will settle down at the bottom of the container. So this is one of the method of bringing about the precipitation or coagulation. The second method of coagulation is just now we have discussed electrophoresis. That means if you are having a U-tube and in that U-tube you are having positive and negative terminal. Colloidal solution is present here. When electricity is passed, all the negatively charged colloidal particle will move towards the positive pole and will accumulate there. That is called the electrophoresis. Now the third important method is a persistent dialysis. Now what is the meaning of the dialysis? In dialysis what we do is we take water in a container and we put the uh, coagulation, the colloidal solution inside a bag that is made up of parchment paper or parchment membrane. That membrane does not allow the colloidal particles to pass through but allow only the solvent particles to pass through. So what will happen if from here this water is going out, from here it is coming inside. Now what will happen? Persistent dialysis that means we will allow the water to flow through the colloidal solution. It will take even the traces of electrolytes which are present inside the colloidal solution. So the stability of the colloidal solution will be lost. The electrolytes are responsible somewhat for the stability of the colloid. So if electrolytes are removed from the uh, colloidal solution then it will undergo precipitation. This is your third method of bringing about the coagulation or precipitation. Now see with the precipitation or coagulation is related a important rule that generally comes in a one mark question that is Hardy schools rule. What it states greater the valency of the flocculating ion greater will be its coagulating power. Flocculating the spelling is incorrect. Greater will be its coagulating power. Now see here Aluminium is having 3 positive charge. So the tendency of aluminium 3 positive to bring about the coagulation is more compared to Mg2 positive which in turn is more compared to Na positive. This is your Hardy schools rule. So today we have covered all the 4 topics of the properties of colloidal solution. The first one is Bravin movement. I'm sorry. The first one is Bravin movement which is the continuous zigzag motion of the colloidal particles which take place due to the unbalanced bombardment of particles or by the molecules of the dispersion medium. It is the reason behind the stability of colloidal solution. Second is Tyndall effect that is the path of light becomes visible when uh, <coughs> the light is passed through colloidal solution and this is because of the scattering of light. The third important property is the electrophoresis which is one of the method of coagulation and to get to know what is the charge on the colloidal particles. Fourth important property is coagulation that is the precipitation and Hardy screws rule we have discussed method of coagulation also we have discussed. So children your uh, 
uh, this chapter surface chemistry is over now you all are requested to download the pdf of ncrt questions and do write down note down all the questions in your ncrt notebook next presentation will start with the next chapter thank you and sairam